Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Pisces. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Pisces, I'm doing your reading with a giant stack of blended decks. You'll see a mix of several decks in your spread today. So we've got Eat Your Words on the split. That is fascinating. Because of the energy, the message that's already here on the table, this is making a lot of sense. It's a kind of coming through as a bit of awkwardness or self-consciousness on your part, maybe because of something that you said in the past that maybe you had a lot of uh, certainty about and it hasn't played out that way. And so now it's like this eating your words. It's like you're feeling uncomfortable about how things played out. with The nine of air at the bottom of the deck, right? Like maybe really worrying, spending a lot of time worrying about that. But you know what, Pisces, if this is true, if this is true, I want to say that other people are not perceiving it in that way. There's nobody blaming you. There's nobody really pointing a finger at you, I don't think. Um, I mean, maybe some of you are experiencing some backlash or some something like that. But it feels to me like this is something that, that you are um, really sinking into in your own kind of internal landscape. And maybe nobody else is even aware of it, of like how hard you're being on yourself with this worthy heart coming up next it's like you're so worthy and then the star underneath that right so which is fascinating so okay people see you in this way that's your energy so even if something didn't work out ultimately it can't tarnish your image your image is too bright to be tarnished it's fascinating to me that the star came out there because you have the star well this one i'm seeing as a star baby i'm a star and the star here already on the table so it's really emphasizing that but i mean this star that's on the table is a reluctant star right this is you kind of maybe second guessing your position okay overall energy from the lifruma healing oracle it's like Pisces, it feels to me like you stepped up and did something really, attempted to do something really extraordinary. Um, maybe it just didn't meet your expectations perhaps and you're being really hard on yourself about that. But I kind of want to congratulate you for taking on something, taking on something really big, attempting something really extraordinary and not let it kind of defeat you or take the wind out of your sails, right? Because it feels like you're worried that you disappointed people. But from what I'm seeing, it's almost as if that's not possible. Okay, overall energy from the Lifruma for Pisces. Cosmic ocean, the cosmic ocean again. So, Okay, cosmic ocean for you today is coming up as like leadership energy. I'm seeing this as like this big number one. Is that how it comes through on the camera? Am I seeing it backwards? It looks like a number one, meaning like um, you're this brave soul that's taking on the, it's like a trailblazing energy. Interesting. Oh, it's a barking dog. Interesting kind of coming out of the Aquarius reading from yesterday where they were, at least in the extended, acting as this kind of trailblazer energy, moving ahead of the collective. You are the leading edge of the collective. It's as if you're the one kind of setting down these stepping stones for the collective to cross, to cross, uh, to make a big shift, to, to make it through the shift, for example. Okay, so, and it's almost as if Maybe you're second guessing your position now because you've got the 10 of earth coming up. The, the, the very first card on the table is a 10 of earth followed by the third eye blind. And what this was talking to me about, it's almost as if you're going completely against your own Piscean nature and trying to be kind of grounded in the real world and not wanting to use your intuition. It's like um, closing your third eye. I'm closing my third eye and I'm going to only make decisions or, or move forward based on reality, right? So whatever it is that you're being hard on yourself about seems to be something that kind of rose up for you um, through the intuitive space, right? It's like you were following your intuition. So now it's almost as if you put blinders up. It's like you're blocking that out. You're turning away from that, that energy. Um, but there's something really fascinating here and I'm not completely sure how it plays into the message. It might just be for one of you. It's like when I saw this card today, 
it looked to me like somebody's sketchbook. It almost looks like a really delicate pencil drawing that is in somebody's sketchbook. It's like you're sitting here in your room and you're sketching these beautiful pencil drawings. And it's like, that's the way you're channeling that energy. It's like you're trying, attempting to give it um, a pathway, an expression, because you've decided not to act on it kind of in the real world anymore. So it's like you're trying to channel it through the sketching because you know that it, it, you can't completely turn your back on it. And so you have to allow the energy to move. And it's like you're trying to focus it into this, this smaller space or this, this more kind of private expression. It's with the star and the um, face, the music coming out next. What these two cards are talking to me about is that it's kind of like that that's not maintainable, that at some point you have to step back out into the starlight. It's interesting, there was a reading the other day that was somebody who was like the star and they wanted off the stage. It's interesting, it's almost like a similar message for you, being the star who wants off the stage, but there's no, it's almost like, but there's no avoiding it. You have to at some point face the music because you're surrounded by all of this magical energy with the hermit and the moon card coming out below that. This hermit card was, was it in that reading that was talking about the light beings? It's like you have this incredible connection to spirit or to the light or to beings, light beings of some sort, especially, that's the fascinating thing, especially when you're by yourself. So it's, it's interesting how actually the more you attempt to kind of um, barricade yourself in or to block things out, I feel like you're so, you're such a creative person that you have to do something creative and if you're not expressing it like out in the world, if you're not actually using it to kind of be some sort of a leader or to guide people or to just be a guiding light, like to be visible, if you're not going to be out and be visible, it doesn't go away, right? It's like you're still surrounded. It's still surrounding you. It's like, see all these, these um, energies dancing around, but it's almost as if that's become a burden to you. It's really fascinating. It's almost as if your connection to spirit has become a burden to you. So, but basically it's saying it doesn't go away. It's like, it's, but I mean, obviously everybody is justified in having a break. And so that's where you are now. You're having a break. So maybe this is kind of the guidance here for you Pisces is that it's completely acceptable to take time out and to shut down your gifts, for example, if that's what you want to do. Though it looks like in this hermit space, like I said, it's almost as if the messenger of air, that spirit energy is almost like more present. It almost seems like if you want to kind of block out the spiritual connection, the way to do it would actually almost be to like go out and be more active out in the world. Um, but I feel like maybe the guidance here is talking about if you are going to take a break, um, that see it as taking a well-earned break and not like you don't use it to punish yourself for like past mistakes or whatever. The the interesting thing is it looks to me, Pisces, like you're actually being like incredibly hard on yourself that a past mistake or a past failure of yours, something that you wish that you could take back, like I said, is actually being perceived maybe by others as, as quite successful or quite valuable. Because this is how it's looking to me. Because it's like the three of water turns into this beautiful heart. And this is what you're perceiving as your failure, the three of cups and the beautiful heart because the 10 of swords is coming after it. So it's like either I'm missing something in the cards or it's that you step forward boldly and kind of made this pronouncement about this is who I am or this is all of that I've received from spirit or my intuition is clearly speaking to me kind of like that I need to present this. I need to kind of uh, bring us all together to have this focus, to have this project, to have this achievement, to work together or just to be together, to be together 
almost like surrounding a vision that you have. It's almost as if a vision that you had was drawing people together, was bringing, everybody wanted to be involved in that, right? But there's something here about, and this could just be your own incredibly high standards for yourself. Something about that, that got like too heavy for you, for example, because it's like it started out as one thing and it, it's, it grew maybe so quickly that it wasn't uh, sustainable by you, right? It's like that it wasn't, you didn't foresee all of the logistics in maintaining this kind of either being inspiring or being a leader or kind of keeping things going. Perhaps it, it like required too much of you at the time, for example. Um, it's like, it, it's as if you, maybe you spoke too soon or you feel like you spoke too soon, got everybody excited, everybody gathered together. And then it's like the weight of it wasn't sustainable. It was too difficult to hold up. I'm just seeing that because this is kind of like, it's, it's bigger, but it's lower down. There's also this idea with this beautiful heart that has come through other readings. The comparison card isn't here to show it to you, but this card is like, it's come up in the past as something that is a little bit too like mechanical or a little bit too, there's something about it that isn't quite right. And this is why I'm saying that it could be your own high standards. That it's almost as if you're breaking your own heart or your expectations are too high. Everybody else is seeing it as extraordinary and you're almost like seeing flaws in it. There's also this idea of this isn't how I would do it. So it's almost as if when the group got together or got involved or it's, it's like you've called a group together, had this grand vision, but when they actually got together, the result of it wasn't quite what you envisioned. This isn't quite the way that it was supposed to be. It's still like we still accomplished something. It's as if it's acceptable, but it's not quite what you wanted. And now it's like it's out there in the world and it's representing you and your work or you and your value or you and your vision. It's like you stepped forward and said, this is what we're going to do. And then when it materialized, it kind of fell short for you. It's just like it's heavy somehow right because then it's followed by this ten of swords and I feel like just like I was saying at the beginning that maybe nobody knows that you're struggling with it in this way because I feel like everybody else is is um, celebrating it thinking that it's beautiful maybe even wanting a copy wanting to be involved want it like um, wanting to be around it wanting to be associated with it in some way and it's almost as if you're like ashamed of it because to you it was a letdown or a disappointment but only to you and I want to say that that's because you're the one holding the vision and so you're you're the only one who knows what it was meant to be so the way that it turned out even though it might not be your highest ideal or highest version You made, you still accomplished something quite spectacular, I want to say. And in fact, with this Ten of Swords and this um, Spill the Tea coming up next, it kind of looks to me like you're being encouraged to talk about it because I feel like you're keeping it all to yourself because of all this. It's like there's this shame involved with the Eat Your Words and the Nine of Air, the Nine of Swords. It's like... Nobody has any idea because to everybody else, it was a success. See what I mean? It was a success, but to you, it's like these same energies that are looking to everybody else like a beautiful success is feeling to you like this. It's just not quite the same. You know what I mean? It's still the star and it's still this beautiful heart, this worthy accomplishment, but it's just not the same. And you're being really hard on yourself about it. Exceptionally hard on yourself about it with the spill the beans. It could also be, it could also be Pisces that something happened almost like behind the scenes. Maybe that's why I'm kind of reading it as nobody knows about this, that 
it's like you could have stepped up with this grand vision, gathered everybody together to do this work or to celebrate. And before it was completely accomplished, it's like something has maybe happened to you in your personal life that you're keeping out of view. And so because of that, it only got this far or is it could be something like that you had to step out before it was fully completed. That could be the reason is it like this, this shift here could be this kind of dropping the ball energy. You feel like you dropped the ball or you left it all in their hands because you had to step away to deal with something, some sort of a loss or some sort of something that is, is not known. It's behind the scenes. So that's what I'm saying. Nobody else has any idea. It's like everything kind of continued as it was meant to, but because of this 10 of swords, like I almost want to put them in this order, right? It's like you got everybody together and then 10 of swords happened to you. And therefore it didn't quite turn out the way that you had envisioned it. And now it's like this heavy heart for you that nobody knows about, that you're keeping to yourself. I mean, which is, it's, well, it's like, I feel like, okay, that's fine. You're kind of dealing with it. You're kind of, um, kind of hiding away in your room, being creative. At least you're still kind of doing stuff, like still, still um, being creative, still working with that energy. And that's fine. And you can take a time out, but it's basically saying, I feel like this keeping it to yourself is almost like adding to the shame. It's like you're creating, the, you're, cre you're creating anxiety, an unnecessary hardship for yourself. That if you would just kind of talk to somebody, that's what Spill the Beans is talking about, that it would really kind of um, release this energy where the moon and the commune with nature, kind of ending this reading here, is talking about that it's like that your own, your own pure nature, this card, it says commune with nature, but I see it as your true pure nature, embracing or embodying your true nature is like a burden to you. It's almost like it's tormenting you, right? With this moon card and all of these voices swirling around because there's a, this idea, Pisces, that you are so intuitive, that you are so connected, that you can't shut that down. You can't shut it down. And even though you may be kind of uh, channeling it into different ways of working with that energy, it's like, it's in a way, it's kind of... Um, fighting your own nature and fighting your own nature is very detrimental. It's not. And so the, the, uh, advice in the cards here today is saying, you may be feeling like almost like spirit is being hard on you because it's un it's, it's unrelenting. It's relentless. It's not letting up even though you're kind of saying like, I need a break or I need to recuperate, or you might even be saying like, I'm, I'm out for now. I can't, I'm not doing this anymore because you've come into this reluctant star energy. It's like, yeah, I know maybe that I am meant to be this light. I am meant to be a healer. I am meant to be a leader. I am meant to be whatever, but I just can't do it right now. This is too hard on me. Because of whatever this Ten of Swords is, is was kind of blow enough. Like that was kind of a setback, for example, enough in the fact that it impacted the outcome of something that was really important to you. The fact that it impacted this something that was really important to you is kind of like, it's like you're being hard on yourself about it, but it feels like it was completely out of your hands. It's like, this is some sort of like life event or a loss of some kind or some kind of unfortunate circumstance that that happened to you, right? It has, it was outside of your ability to control. And because of that, it did impact the evolution of a vision that you had. But like I said, nobody else seems to perceive that, but that, that doesn't, that doesn't, I'm not trying to negate or belittle the, the weight of how it feels to you. Basically what it's saying is it's like that your work is important, that you are this bright light, this, this, um, North star for a lot of people that you are a healing presence for a lot of people. And basically it's like, but you're maybe in a healing phase right now, overcoming this, but it's saying like kind of the best way to get through that the most quickly is to at least have, I want to say one other person that you 
say it out loud too, because that really releases the energy. I've got the story about my cat monster and the fact that I carry kind of this guilt and shame around about it. It's interesting because the eat your words card is the very first card where it's almost as if you want to take back something that you said because it didn't play out the way that you said that it would and you're really holding yourself accountable to that. But at the same time, it's almost as if the message here is saying, well, you need to say this. It's not like getting up in front of a crowd and declaring a vision or, you know, uh, a prophecy of any sort. It's just like, I want to say just speaking to a best friend and communicating what it is that you're feeling is going to help kind of release this energy and turn it back to this, this state that feels most natural and welcoming to you. It's interesting because here at the last card, it's still kind of saying that like you can still keep it to yourself. It's almost like this is your sketchbook, right? This is the sketching that is happening. It's in this book. It's just something about communicating this feeling that you have that nobody knows about. It's like this shame that you're holding that if you just say it out loud to somebody Maybe even just say it out loud to an empty room, but just speak the words out loud. It's going to kind of help transmute this energy from, it's almost as if your, your connection to spirit, your intuitive side is being seen as a flaw or being seen as a problem, but it's your true nature and you can't you can't stop being it. You can't avoid it forever, right? The longer you do, the more uncomfortable and tormenting it's getting. And so it's basically just saying, just speak the words out loud, admit, say, give voice to how it is that you're feeling to release that energy so that it can return to a more comfortable, pleasant experience for you. You know what I mean? It's not saying that you have to go out there and broadcast your vision or your intuition to everybody, but just for your own personal experience, it won't be something that you're fighting or resisting. It can go back to being something really beautiful, right? Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna continue to pull cards. I'm curious to see what comes next. If you're interested in that, link is in the description. If not, I will see you next time, Pisces. Thanks, bye.